Surprise University. A service of Babylon Theater. Zans. Education warmed over. Postmodern education for the modern world. Real SU classes. Repackaged and produced. Just for you. To watch anytime. On this station. Tonight's program is... Good morning, class. Welcome to another exciting adventure in Lernation. I am, as usual, your instructor, Dennis Menachi. And this is our fourth meeting together, and as that goes, we're going to have a quiz. I've been warning you about it for a while now. So on your, on your desk, there's a piece of paper which says, do not turn over this paper. How many of you turned over that paper after you got to your desk? Show of hands. A few admit it. Mm -hmm. Well, if you had done so, it wouldn't have been a big deal. You would have just known sooner than the rest of us that we are having a quiz today. So the rest of you turn over that paper now. Take a look at it. There are three questions for you to answer. It's a multiple choice. Each one has four possible answers. I'm going to give you five minutes to do this test. That should be plenty of time for you to talk to your neighbors and figure out which answer you should put down. So, test starts right now. Let's take a look at these questions and their supposed answers. Well, the first question is, what is the name of the book which we use as the official text of this class, that is to say, Learnation 101. Is it one, Lord of the Hobbit? Two, Golly's Epistles to the Amnesians? Or three, How I Learned to Forget the Comical Manifesto and Just Babble? Or is it four, all of the above? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something shocking, but you should learn to accept such things. They happen all the time. The answer to this question is, number four, all of the above. And the reason for that is, is should you ask someone, because none of these other three books, or none of these other three, which are books, I suppose, can be proven to be the official text on account of this class was so late in getting organized that some of the information didn't make it into the catalog, one of them being the official text of the class. Therefore, the only logical answer to this question is number four, all of the above. Moving on to number two, how are the letters T-I-O-N and A-T-E related? Well, Sounds familiar somehow. Is it one, they are all part of the alphabet? <laughs> that would be just too easy, don't you think? Or is it two, testing is a regressive tax which favors the rich and famous? Hmm. Or is it three, each set of letters forms a suffix when appended to certain words, creating thereby different usages for the base word? At least one of these sets of letters is now considered to be outmoded in modern usage and has generally been replaced by a shortened form. Or is it number four, I choose not to select. There is gender bias. Wow. I bet you think it's number three, and in most cases I would probably agree with you. But I have to tell you, in this case, it is again number four. I choose not to uh, select, etc. Now, why, you might ask me, but you won't get an answer. Never mind, just keep, don't, don't think about it, just, just let it go. Let it go, Miriam, just let it go. So, down to number three, the last question. Where can we find you if we need to talk to you between classes? Hmm. Well, how about one, down by the creek doing a doobie? Mm -hmm. Or two, 
in the student onion cafe at my table doing a doobie or is it three not if I see you first or number four in the Dean's office asking for a raise and doing a doobie with him <laughs> wouldn't you like to know but friends and neighbors if you decided not to be fooled into choosing number four and you decided number three was most logical because all the others involve doing a doobie and you're not quite sure what that is yes you are correct that was a great bit of logic you used and folks number the answer to number three is number three not if I see you first well isn't that exciting all right I'm not going to have you pass those papers up and I'll meet you back at the chalkboard with the explanation in just a minute. And now I need to make this following announcement. This has been a test of the Surprise University testing system. It was only a test test. Had this been a real test, you would have passed them up, I would have taken them somewhere and graded them, and nobody would have had a good time. Now on with the business at hand, which is getting you through Learnation 101 so that you can go ahead and get into the really fun classes which make up the balance of the Babylon Theater major here at Surprise University. Well, so far in this class we've been preparing you in the same way that a sous chef prepares the ingredients of a salad or a soup. You are, and probably at this point, without you being aware of it, but you certainly will be aware of it by the time this period is over. Be being turned from something that you look at every day of every week in the mirror and unconsciously say there's I am a total person turned into a bunch of ingredients which you can put together and make a salad or a, a pizza. And how does this process have anything to do with the process of learning in this class called Learnation. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. So sit back and listen to what I have to say because when I say you, I mean you. Learnation, as we learned last time, is merely an archaic form of the base word learn, which once had its verb, verb form as to learnate, but which we now have shortened simply to to learn without any apparent negative repercussions. And we saw that the word learnation is the old noun form of to learn. I'm going to expand on what our expert Don Barn Cleatly said about learnation last week and other such words and say that if learnation is a noun form then what do we use for that purpose now? We use the word learning, ladies and gentlemen. Learning is the modern way to say learnation. As in, he has a certain amount of learning in that area, or <clears throat> she has been able to use her learning in a widely different way than her teachers would have expected. Now, we need to distinguish between the noun learning and the present tense form of the verb to learn, which would be, for instance, what is happening in the sentence, he is learning how to operate a camera, in which case learning is a form of the verb to learn. But when he is finished learning, he will have learning, if you see what I mean. So I think I can say with reasonable intention to read the minds of Greg and Nolan, that they chose the word Learnation for the title and business of this class, largely to emphasize the importance of being in possession of the learning needed, if one wants to say they know how to do Babylon Theater. And that is a point that you must understand before you proceed from 101 to the higher levels of this major. Babylon Theater which is the sum of Greg and Nolan together, is not intending, nor will it 
accidentally teach you how to be Babylon theater because that noun has already been defined. Greg and Nolan having pretty well been Babylon theater, they are not proposing that some graduate of this college major will become or be Babylon theater in their own right. No. They are intent on showing you how to do Babylon theater in your everyday life or how to live your life in a Babylon theater way. Why would you want to do that? Why would any of you who may have quite different goals for your life than to get involved in theater or stand-up comedy or anything of that sort want to learn how to do Babylon theater? Because Babylon theater is not an occupation. It is not a profession such as acting or playwriting or directing might be. Rather, it is a philosophy. Philosophy, ladies and gentlemen, is the act of using our human brains and intelligence to go beyond making a living into the area of understanding why we are here and what we can do about it to make the situation more full of meaning for ourselves. Philosophers are those people who feel moved to do this not only for themselves, but also for the benefit of others. <clears throat> you will find that since Greg and Nolan are still with us, and that they have a large rep repository, both mental and physical, of their works and also of their philosophy, and most of the time these two have the same resulting products, that you are going to hear recordings of these two speaking directly or performing plays which illustrate their philosophy. And I will be pleased if I happen to be the first of the teachers in this area to take advantage of this tool because it can go a long way towards giving us a direct understanding that is much more authentic than the words I could come up with to discuss what I know on the subject. So, listen to this audio segment and at the conclusion of it I will have one or two brief remarks before I dismiss you from today's class. I, I, the thing is, I agree with you Greg. People make their own choices and so forth and there are other verses and people <laughs> inhabit them and are perfectly happy and able to justify their verse as well as I am. Yeah. But I really think this is a great verse. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, I love it. It's a good it's verse. It's a good verse as long as, you know, I don't crash my car or anything like that. that I think we should try to avoid those sorts of... Well, I think that's true in any verse. But as you yeah. say, as we've said, the, the verse is only what we put into it. So if we go into it not knowing much about the the one we just came out of, then the Bible verse is not going to resemble that very much. Mm -hmm. So the Bible verse is limited to all of the our all our life experiences. Well, there's in really a way nobody, it is. there's no there's no uh, research department or an expect And this is why people like Nate, because I can't articulate it, have to explain that other people are more expert about how that happens, what we're talking about, yeah. than, than we are. Right. Now, in this case, this is a fairly recent recording, and it happens to be available on their YouTube channel. But there are hours of recordings, some of which go back almost 50 years, and you as students of Babylon Theater will be lucky enough to hear some of them. So between now and next week's class, try to find something about Babylon Theater that you didn't know and that you haven't heard about so far in this class. All right, class dismissed. I, 
I, the thing is, I agree with you, Greg. People make their own choices and so forth. Thank you.